Hey, deserving listeners, a lot of you have been asking that I watch the new Paris Hilton documentary and react to it. Let's get to it. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Let's get to the show. No one really knows who I am. Something happened in my childhood that I've never talked about with anyone. I still have nightmares about it. It's terrifying, and I relive that every night. I experienced it. To this day, I'm still traumatized. Okay, so right away, it looks like she's talking about PTSD and how she might have nightmares at night regarding her traumas. We don't know that, but it looks like that's what she's referring to. If that's true, I think this is fantastic for someone like her of such a high profile to raise awareness for trauma and trauma conditions is wonderful. Paris is addicted to drama. Oh, no, 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 no. Go, I, I'm not leaving my sunglasses. I can't. You were going to a f***ing animal bag. I know. Okay, so we have our first thing that I might react to. Her sister, who says that she knows Paris Hilton better than anyone else, says that Paris is addicted to drama. What does that mean? Well, that can mean a lot of different things. It could mean that you actually really enjoy chaos, you self-destruct. It could also just mean that you're gregarious and you like to have fun in life or something in between the two or something else. Who knows what the sister meant? Maybe we'll find out. Let's continue watching. Do not yes, I do. We'll take one second. They're on the tape, please. Always has to be fast paced and going and even leaving the house and losing the phone and running back to get the laptop. There's always some form of dramedy. I'm going in the car. I, I swear. Okay, so we got a little bit more description of what she meant by that. There's a lot of different possibilities there. Is it self imposed, meaning that does Paris purposely create that situation where she's running around trying to get a lot of attention? Possibly. Or is she distractible? Is she on the ADHD spectrum somehow? Or is she just kind of disorganized and chooses to be disorganized? There's a lot of different possibilities there. And I guess that would be my main question to the sister would be, sorry, are you saying she just has a hard time organizing herself? Or does she, in a fake way, drum up drama to get attention because that's the only way she knows how to get attention or she, she was rewarded for that when she was young, that would be a question I would have. And I, I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry, I'm a little late, but are you mad at me? Yes. Sorry. It's rude. I know. I apologize. All right, so we see a little interaction between Paris and her sister. I think her sister is angry at Paris because they're going to be late, and she blames Paris for making her late to, to this charity event of some sort. So I don't know what this means, but we do see that the sister feels free to express her anger towards Paris and that Paris is saying, I'm sorry, and I know that I do this sometimes. So notable data. I don't know what it says, but let's continue watching. They say trauma, the mind may forget, but the body never forgets. So she appears to be kind of joking in saying that she likes animals more than people. But I've actually heard this from a lot of people. I love animals, but I would say I love animals as much as I love people. But some people, due to their upbringing and their experience with humans, actually don't like humans very much, whereas animals are, other animals besides humans, are much more trustworthy, much more safe for them. I don't know if that's what Paris is talking about. Let's continue watching. In the gossip papers in Los Angeles, you and your sister have been a staple. Why are people so fascinated with you? People always ask me that. I don't know, I'm just living my life. I think this is a comment on our society in terms of why were we so fascinated with her? Why are we continually fascinated with her? Well, I would speculate it has to do with our ideals. Uh, when she, particularly when she was very famous, she was young, which is an ideal. Blonde, white, blue-eyed, rich, famous, thin, connected, interesting, in the right circles. All those things we consider to be an ideal. And when we have certain people that represent those ideals, 
then we're interested in them because we just want to absorb them. You could speculate as to why that is. If we went back 100,000 years, what was it about our species where we would look towards certain people in our tribe and consider them to be the ideal, and then we would, want to, we would want to gravitate toward them. Maybe they were just really good at getting food for the tribe, or they just looked very appealing, or they were very good socially or something, or they had a lot of power. So it stands a reason as social animals that we would be attracted to people that represent things that society considers to be important. In another society, in the past or in the future, they wouldn't look to Paris Hilton necessarily as the ideal. But it, she definitely represented the ideal of, you know, 2005 or whenever it was at the height of her career. Maybe she's still in the height. I don't know. I don't really follow Paris Hilton. I should disclose that I had and still do have very little awareness of her. I never watched her TV show. I knew she was one of those first people like Kim Kardashian who became famous just because they were famous. Watching the documentary, it's almost like she was the first influencer in some ways. I don't know if that's true. But anyway, so we look towards certain ideals and we are very attracted to that. We want to know more. Perhaps as we watch the ideal person in our social circle, and today the world is our social circle considering the internet, we want to absorb that. We want to learn from it. We, we want to be connected to it. We want to be close to it. And when we're insecure, particularly when we're younger, we will look to idols to meld with, at least in our fantasies. It's common for younger people and older, but particularly younger people when we're at our most insecure and our most uh, self-conscious about who we are and how we fit in and how people are looking to us. It's very normal to look towards people that we want to be like, and not only to absorb and to mimic them, but also just to be close to them. If, if we feel like we know them and we're close to them and we follow them, it just feels like we're through osmosis sort of getting some of their, their vicarious benefits socially. You know, if, if we're next to Paris Hilton, then maybe as she gets attention and love and accolades and attention, then maybe it'll rub off on us a little bit. Of course, consciously, we understand that to follow her on Snapchat, we're not actually being close to her. But you could imagine how that might feel that way. And it would just provide a little bit of comfort when we're feeling very self-conscious and insecure as a, as a human being, particularly when we're younger. Anyway, let's continue watching. Meryl Glam, ready, a.m. Ready, a.m. Wake refreshed, yeah in my dreams, <laughs> never wake refreshed. Okay, something that isn't unique to Paris is sleep deprivation. It is extremely problematic that in our society we tend to privilege go, 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 sleep is for the lazy, and I don't need that much sleep, I can get by without much sleep. Uh, no, it's not humanly possible. Generally speaking, adults need at least seven hours, if not more. And I think she just flew to Asia somewhere, and so she's jet lagged and there's gonna be problems there. So many problems can happen when you're sleep deprived. There's a lot of famous people, I think Amy Winehouse might have had this issue, issue as well, where their schedule is just overly booked and they have handlers that sk schedule them a lot because the handlers, they usually get a percentage of the money. And so they're not interested in the well-being necessarily of the star like Paris Hilton. They're more interested in the productivity of the star. And so they overbook a lot of these people. And we just see for Paris that it's like one in the morning right now and she has to be ready to go in full makeup and everything at 8 a.m., which means she probably has to get up at like five or maybe five or six in the morning or something. We can't exist on that much sleep. So uh, what will happen a lot of times is that through sleep deprivation, depression can set in, uh, alcoholism or other drug abuse. You know, you need something to fall asleep. You need something to wake up and you become addicted to, to things. Uh, you are anxious. You have ADHD symptoms. So a lot of things can cascade from there. You know, a little bit of sleep deprivation. Now you need more substances, which 
interferes with your sleep, which means you need, you need more substances, which means your brain isn't working quite right. Your, your life isn't going well. You make a mistake. Now you feel ashamed of yourself. I don't deserve sleep. I need to push myself. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And sleep is central to so many different things in our life. We evolved to sleep about eight hours a night. We need that sleep. So tiring. I'm just literally, my, my mind is going through what the upcoming months are and it's non-stop. I don't even know who I am sometimes. I'm always putting on this, you know, facade or just like happy, perfect life. So what this brings up is, for me, the pressure that we put on women and girls to be a certain way, to be pleasing, to do what they're told, to not really be themselves. Generally speaking, boys and men are allowed to be themselves, even famous people. You'll see people like Brad Pitt show up to an event scruffy looking, whereas women, they're not allowed to be that way. They will be absolutely just ripped and torn apart, not only by the media, but even by people next to them or even themselves, they internalize those, those voices. And so seeing this contrast between Paris Hilton in public and the Paris Hilton when she's, you know, two in the morning and being more authentic and real makes me wonder if she has been given so many messages growing up that she can't be the real her. She has to be what society wants her to be. I have horrible insomnia. I'm scared to go to bed at night. Okay, I'm guessing we'll get more details on this as we move forward, but a lot of people with PTSD will have insomnia for a variety of reasons. One is, is that throughout the day, you're experiencing a lot of spikes in distress because there's a lot of trauma triggers and that just stresses out the body, which makes it hard to fall asleep. Another reason is because a lot of people with PTSD will have nightmares and then you don't wanna fall asleep or you do fall asleep and the nightmare will wake you up, this sort of thing. So um, I'm guessing we'll hear more, but let's continue watching. I always have this recurring nightmare, no matter what I do. I'm in bed and these two people come into my room Say, do you want this to happen the easy way or the hard way? I'm trying to just run. That is awful. And the visual really drives it home. Now, what could this mean? Could this mean that this has to do with her trauma? That this is somewhat emulative of the trauma that she went to? Could be. It could also just symbolize being terrorized by people, maybe even the way she feels when the paparazzi are attacking her. It makes me feel bad for her, for sure. I've talked with clients along these lines. It's horrible. Trauma is awful, and the conditions that can follow trauma are just awful. There are so many people suffering from trauma conditions. The more I talk to people, the more I treat people, the more, of, the more of you who email me, the more I realize that most people have some trauma in their past that they are suffering from currently, whether it's PTSD or just some other condition as a result of that trauma. I'm, I feel bad for Paris, obviously, but I'm glad that she's raising awareness of that. So let's continue watching. Actually, I'm just gonna end it there. I'll, that'll be part one. And in the future, I'll watch other clips and react to it and post it as well. So watch out for that. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.